diversity of this area. And we're sick of guns. We're outraged and we're angry. We simply find unacceptable when a 10-year-old gets his father's gun unloaded, finds the ammunition where he knows it's placed in the closet, and kills himself in front of 49th Street School. That is unacceptable. We cry when angry, estranged husbands come back and shoot the whole family. We gasp when the parties, people show off their guns and accidentally shoot and kill a guest. We say, enough, enough of guns. We want action now. And what we want is to pass laws so that our local communities can have gun laws which are stronger than those which the weaselly legislature seems only able to pass. But we can't do that because state has preempted our right to pass local laws about guns. And we pay the cost of law enforcement and the cost of health care, and we demand the right to be able to pass laws which we think are appropriate for our own communities. I never go out to speak, but that I don't ask people to do something. All this talk won't get us anywhere. It won't reduce one gun from the streets unless we take some personal responsibility. We passed out to you yellow cards. We don't want you to write notes on the back of them. We don't want you to take them home and figure out what to do with them. We want you to fill them out today and leave them in boxes which are placed on tables around here. We want you to fill out the top which says, today, April 16th, 1994, I attended a march and rally in Los Angeles. Stop the violence now. This card is going to go to the governor and to the attorney general, and it says, I demand your support for a new state law that will allow us to pass more strict gun controls of guns and ammunition at the local level. I demand your support for prevention of violence, not just punishment. And I demand your support for funding for good schools, parks, libraries, and jobs, not just prisons. And we want you to, to fill these out so we can send them up to the governor and the attorney general. You could be writing letters to all the candidates for governor and demanding that they make guns and control of guns part of their campaign. I attended a uh, meeting yesterday where at least 15 candidates passed out their literature. Only one ever mentioned guns and violence as a part of their platform. We have to change that. We have to make our legislators and candidates more responsible. The second part of this card says, I want to stop the violence. The time is now. And it's a pledge for you to sign personally. I pledge to keep assault weapons and handguns out of my home. I pledge to work to promote nonviolent activities, programs, attitudes, and behaviors in my home, school, and community. I pledge to work to support laws and programs to prevent violence. And it gives you a chance to sign if you're interested in becoming involved in your own neighborhood. We hope you will read the cards. You will sign them and leave them here for us so we can deliver them to the governor. I now have a second responsibility aside from asking for your action. I have the privilege of introducing someone. I want to tell you a little bit about why she's here. In February, the 911 Police Department dispatcher received a call of a man with a gun shooting. A patrol car responded to the Northridge address. As the officers stepped out, they were met with a hail of bullets, and rookie Christy Lynn Hamilton, four days out of the police academy, died. She was shot by a 17-year-old. The gun was an AR-15. That's a legal assault gun in California. It's a sporterized version of an M16 rifle, which is the rifle used by Army, 
in all of our most recent wars. This is a legal gun in California. They took off the little stud on the front barrel that used to hold a bayonet. I guess it's not sporting to shoot deer or targets with a bayonet. I've never been able to quite understand this. At any rate, it's my very great privilege to introduce to you now the daughter of Christy Lynn Hamilton, Kelly Stephen. First, I wanted to recognize a young man who is now 15 years old and 11 years old. He was shot. He lived, but he lives his life as a paraplegic. And he made all of these signs out here, kids that have been killed or wounded from gun violence. His name is David Lee. Over the last two months, I have tried desperately to make sense out of my mother's untimely death. After waiting 45 years, she accomplished what few achieve over a lifetime. She realized a dream. However, on February 22, 1994, her dream dissipated as shots fired were sent from an automatic assault rifle, which took what was ultimately hers, her life. As I pick up the newspaper every morning, the front page is splashed with evidence of world violence and destruction. Lives are snuffed out by civilians with military-style weaponry, and our police find themselves outgunned. Our children go to school where their friends no longer play innocent games. They are faced with unfavorable odds against the threat of violence. My mother never got the opportunity to do her job to protect and to serve. And now I'm not so sure she ever could. She will never see her children get married. She will never hold her grandchildren in her arms. And I ask myself, why? I find no answer. It is time that we unite against violence. It is our lives and our children's lives as well as future generations that we must preserve. Instead of preparing our children for a future society of violence and death, let's fight to afford them the resources to inspire them for life. Are there solutions? Yes, there are. There is power for change in numbers. We can do something to save ourselves and our loved ones. I too was one effect, was unaffected by this issue. Then one day, it knocked on my front door and in seconds left me with an internal emptiness. Don't wait until violence knocks on your door. It is up to each one of us to be advocates for change. Let's help stop the senseless murder of our children and create an environment in which peace prevails and dreams can be achieved. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for sharing with us. I would like to say a, a couple of housekeeping things um, that I should have done early on. Um, if your restrooms are on the other side of the building on Temple Street, um, unfortunately they got dropped off on the wrong block, but that's where they are. So you can either go through the building or go around the building. Um, and there are, and there is water um, over, I believe, on that side and that side. There are two places for water. You know, I, hearing Kelly, I, I do have to say something. You know, we all great grieve with Kelly as we grieve with all families the victims of violence. But no family, no family should go unrecognized. Students from Japan who are killed are no more important than anybody else's children who are killed. And we have to remember that. The same weekend those two students from Japan were killed, we had 10 other people murdered in Los Angeles County and nobody heard about it. We need to keep our level of outrage about every killing and every, ch every mother's child who dies, and I think we need to keep that in mind as we go forward. At this time, I would like to introduce the, the chairman of the Violence Prevention Coalition and a very special friend, Jeff Cressy. Jeff 
has worked on violence 